Welcome to the Startup Grind. As we introduce our special guest, Ido Leffler. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon, I guess. Good morning. Um, I'm going to. I'm constantly jet lagged, so I'm not quite sure whether it's morning or afternoon. My watch is always set to where my kids are, so uh, they're not on this time zone right now. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ido. Um, I'm going to start off um, with me. So I'm, uh, to explain, I guess, this accent a little bit, um, I'm an Israeli-born Australian who, when I was 21, I moved to Jakarta, Indonesia. When I was 23, I moved to Mumbai, India. When I was 25, I moved to Tel Aviv. And I, when I was 31, I moved to San Francisco. Hence the fucked up accent. <laughs> and, and, and so, um, oh, and I was taught English by South Africans. So it's totally messed up. I'm the father of two little monkeys, um, married and live out here in um, Mill Valley in, um, in, in Marin. And I constantly, uh, you know, I'm constantly on the plane and constantly on the drive between the Bay Area and here in Silicon Valley where we have a fair few investments more so than just uh, our Yes2 business, which has been one of the most exciting things about being here in the Bay Area, getting to know a lot of startups and getting to know the brands that are out here. For me, I started in business when I was 18 years old. That was my, I went, while at university, I wanted to make a few extra dollars. I started up a company that delivered freshly baked bagels and croissants to people's homes on Sunday mornings. We would get orders by this thing called a fax machine. Um, that would come in and we would, you know, literally fulfill orders. I was very fortunate to be able to sell that company when I was 21, believe it or not. People actually, somebody actually wanted to buy a bagel delivery business. Um, but we ended up, um, I ended up going on this crazy journey, which culminated with me living in Tel Aviv. I had just met my wife. I was leading this, who's been to Tel Aviv before? So you know how absolutely crazy and hedonistic life can be in Israel. We were these um, mini driving, virgin flying, apple using people. Um, who were working damn hard during the day and partying very hard at night. And we were looking for, you know, but we were disgrun disgruntled consumers. We wanted to lead a healthier life at the same time. So what we did, we looked for a solution. Like most of you in your businesses, you've found something that's bothering you and you want to fix it. We looked at the natural beauty world, which was a market that was growing at lightning speed, and we wanted to create a brand that appealed to us. All the other brands on the market weren't bad, they just weren't very sexy. They didn't have a very good user experience. So we wanted to create a natural beauty brand that didn't compromise on anything. We created these, um, this, this thing called the four love points. Will she love how the products work? Will she love how the product looks? Will she love the price? And will she love to tell her friends about it? But I'm not exactly the best case scenario for selling shampoo. Not easy. Not easy for a follically challenged, hairy, Israeli, Australian, Indonesian, Indian guy to go out and um, pitch selling shampoo. So we got some of the best formulas to get, formulators together, got my wife as our guinea pig, and went out thinking that we could sell a, a, a dream. We started with six products in 16 stores. Now, my whole thing is today, which I want to impart on you, is about partnership. How to develop long-term partnerships that can effectively change your life. So I was in a very simple solution, in a situation. I was six products in 16 stores. Call that our alpha test. And I thought that the, you know, and a logical step from going from six products in 16 stores was to go to the world's biggest drug store chain, Walgreens. Not very clever. I'll never admit to being the smartest kid in the room, 
But I thought that going from six products in 16 stores, which wasn't even the minor leagues, I could easily walk in to Walgreens and, you know, change my life. So I did it. I called up a friend who knew a friend who knew a friend who knew a friend. And I found through contacts and sneaking into VIP rooms, I would come to events like this and sneak into the green room. And through one of those events, I met a guy who said, I can introduce you to Walgreens. And I got given a half an hour, a half an hour meeting with Walgreens. 30 minutes. I flew from Tel Aviv to Deerfield, Illinois in the middle of winter. It's like going from Hawaii to hell. <laughs> and, um, and I, <laughs> the polar vortex. Uh, and I went there and, and it was amazing. We got this uh, uh, amazing um, experience to meet this woman by the name of Michelle. Now, excuse me, what's your name? Yeah. Han, can I borrow you for a second? Can you give her a big round of applause? She's, now, do, do, do you know how to juggle? Okay, it's okay, you don't need to know how to juggle. Uh, now, I need you just over here. Okay. Now, I want, uh, Han? Yes. Now, I want you to picture Han as being a typical Midwestern woman <laughs> wearing a pantsuit. And Han's, now, Han's name's Michelle. Everybody say, hi, Michelle. Hi. Okay. Now, Han, or Michelle, sorry, um, is walking towards me in the lobby of Walgreens. Now, I'm sitting there. I've got my name tag on. It says yes to. Everybody around me has got name tags that say Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble. I'm shitting myself. I'm sweating profusely. I don't know what to do. You know, I, I'm anxious. This is potentially going to be the biggest meeting of my life. Now, you're all going to hopefully be in a situation like this where you're going to walk into meetings that are going to potentially change your life. Now, I can see in Michelle's eyes, these beautiful eyes, that she, as she's walking towards me, that she, if she can get out of this 30-minute meeting in 15 minutes, it's a win for her. Huge win. So Michelle is walking towards me with her hand out. Stop, 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 yes. <laughs> hand out. And she's walking towards me, and then stop. Now, at this point, I don't know if you ever have had this situation in your career, but time went really slowly. Now, I don't know why I did what I did next. I really don't. Yeah. But it was a decision that changed my trajectory. And I, I swear to God, I think that if I didn't do this particular thing, I wouldn't be standing here right now. So hand up. And I went as follows. Are you watching? I moved her hand out of the way. <laughs> I leant all the way in. I gave her a kiss on both cheeks. And I said, this is how we do it in Israel. <laughs> she nearly fell over. <laughs> Can you give her a big round of applause? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, what I, so what I didn't know at that point, which was a really interesting learning curve, there is nothing Midwestern women love more than intimate physical contact with a stranger. <laughs> now, but, but what, but what that did do, and, what I want to, and why I'm telling you this story, is that it threw her off course. She was coming in for what was going to be a 15-minute meeting. That was her goal. What ended up happening was that we built a relationship. It, the first 30 minutes of that meeting was spent talking about our lives. The fact that I just met the girl of my dreams, that I was going to propose, all of these things were, 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 were real personal interactions that she could relate to. She told me about her family. We became friends. And that 30-minute meeting became a three-hour meeting. Again, if I hadn't moved the hand out of the way, given her a kiss, and I don't recommend you do that to everybody you meet, but if I didn't do that thing to make me stand out, it wouldn't have resulted in what today has resulted in 
tens upon tens upon tens upon tens of millions of dollars worth of business. Because it would have been a 15 minute meeting, I would have been just like any other meeting she's gone into. Think about things that make you stand out. Now I've got something, I've got a skill that you guys, that, uh, that most of you actually in the room have, but I have something which is, I consider it to be kryptonite to American businesses. They can't say no to me because of it. It's called having a really awesome Australian accent. Figure out what makes you different. I wear something orange every single day. I've worn something orange every single day for seven years, working day. Weekends, my wife makes me take off the orange. Why do I do that? That first meeting with Michelle, I wore the most hideous orange tie known to man. And I never want to forget that first meeting. I don't want to forget how humble I felt walking into that room, how I was sweating, how I was packing the FedEx boxes. Today, yes to is, you know, is bigger than we could have ever dreamt of, but it happened because of that stupid thing that I did. Michelle, who is now my fairy godmother, has become a dear friend. She's someone who I've had a long-term partnership with. She's moved off the role in our world of beauty. We still can't became friends. We know, I know her family, I know her kids, I know her husband. And guess what? All of a sudden, she's made it back into my world again, into the beauty world in Walgreens. Long-term partnerships, long-term relationships. But as you go into partnership with your partners, business partners, who here has a business partner? Okay. I have one. His name's Lance. He's much less intelligent and much worse looking than I am. This is Lance. Lance is the polar opposite of me. I'm pictures, his numbers. That's how we've figured it out. Lance is to beauty what my shoes are to a Tesla. Nothing. He has zero connection to the beauty world at all. I had to like give him fashion tips as we were going through this whole journey. But what Lance does have is a wife. God knows how, but he has a wife. An amazing wife at that. And Lance once day, one day came into my office at Yes2 as the CFO of the company at the time and said, Ido, I've got the greatest beauty product idea that will known to man. Now, in my head, I'm already thinking of ways to, to throw him out of my office. There is no right that Lance has to come up with a product idea. That's not his thing. But he's persistent, and he tells me about his wife and how she's using these makeup-removing towelettes and how she's going through like one packet a week, which in my world is a good thing because I, you know, they're coming more. And, but there wasn't anything natural that she could buy for that. Nobody had come up with a solution for a biodegradable toilet. Nobody had come up with a solution with a formula that worked that was natural. And what we ended up doing, he ended up pitching this to me, and I ended up doing what I would normally do with his crazy ideas with product. I took it to a filing cabinet and scrunched it up and put it as far back in my brain as I could imagine. Because he's a finance guy, what does he know about product? A few months pass, his, I thought he'd forgotten about it. We had a big meeting coming up with Target. And he says to me, Ido, what happened to my product idea? Oh, Lance, we've been working on it, don't worry. He goes, I'm coming to that meeting and I want to see you pitch that. I believe in it. So you know what, as a joke, I'm going to put it at the end of the presentation. I'm going to pitch it to Target. They're going to laugh at it, and we're all going to laugh at Lance. It'll be funny. <laughs> so, so we go in, and Lance comes to the meeting. We're with our buyer at Target, and we go through the whole deck. And the last slide is this stupid product that Lance has come up with. And I pitch it in a pretty funny way. Everything's kind of hilarious and the buyer goes, stop. What is that product? I said, listen, that product is our, yes to, our potential new toilet. It's this stupid product Lance has come up with. Let's all laugh at Lance. And the guy goes, no, 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 no. 
This is going to be your number one selling product. I want it now. I don't want it in seven months' time, ten months' time. I want it in three months. Go. So in my world, that's like getting your, you know, if you're in the, in, in the tech world, you're like going and hiring every engineer you know. Everybody's sleeping in bunk beds, you're hanging out. We basically did that for towelettes. Not as sexy, or sexy for some maybe. And those towelettes that Lance came up with today in the United States, one towelette, one of those cucumber towelettes is sold every Every second, somebody in the, this country is buying one of those products. It's our number one selling product by far. We've sold tens of millions of units of that item around the world. And it came from my stupid CFO. <laughs> I hate that product. It's the most humbling product I've ever had to do. And I go up on stage and tell this story, primarily so you guys understand, you never know where your ideas are going to come from inside of your organization. You never know what partner's going to come. And it's about putting your ego to the side. If I hadn't, you know, if Lance hadn't forced me to present that, my ego would have taken over. I know more about beauty. I know more about product development. I know more about brand. I would have not... If, if he hadn't forced my hand, I could have potentially lost out on what something that's changed our company's valuation that you, you know, to numbers that are in the stratosphere. So you never know. So the last thing about our company is that we're all about yes. You've got to learn how to say yes. Become a yes culture. Say yes to stuff. You don't need to say yes to everything. We've said no. We've said yes sometimes to way too many things um, in our career. But one thing that you, but what you should do is you need to wake up with a yes attitude to how you attach, at, go out with innovation, partnership, and your team. Say yes to your team as much as you can. You never know where it's going to lead. So what we're doing right now, we're doing a campaign which is trying to get a million moments of yes. We launched it a couple of days ago. It's gone bananas. Um, and I think you'll get a kick out of it. Welcome to the Academy of Yes, where we believe that the answer to all of life's questions is yes. What did Alexander the Great say after winning the Battle of Granicus? Yes! And how did Eleanor Roosevelt reply when asked if she supported civil rights? Yes! And what did Benjamin Franklin say when he was asked if he would write an essay on flat shorts? Um, yes? Yes! C. Indubitably. In addition to rigorous academics, we receive a complete education, including the artistry of yes. Yes, 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 yes. To be or not to be, that is the question. The answer is yes. And what is the artist trying to tell us with this piece? But most importantly, the Academy of Yes teaches us that by saying yes, we can accomplish more than we ever dreamed possible. Are you ready? Yeah! And your final answer is... Yes. Out. What will you say yes to? So, bottom line is, say yes, listen to your partners occasionally, but most importantly, kiss everybody you meet. Thank you guys, thank you. Uh, so, I'm going to you know, if the, we're going to take, I think we've got time for one, two questions. So if there's any questions out there. 
Oh, a shy audience. Yeah. The question was, how do we wield the credibility to um, get into those stores? Really great question. The first thing we did, um, so when we got, this is something that you guys are going to face, I hope, a lot. We got a really big account, Walgreens. The first order we got from Walgreens was, we, was 800, of each, 800 of each item. That was easy to produce. I had no problem with that, 800 of each item. Our factory at the time was about the size of this table. Have you guys ever committed to something, thinking, okay, I can commit to it, and all of a sudden to discover that you've screwed up and you now need to do a lot more in order to fulfill that commitment? Well, we discovered that I was wrong. It wasn't 800 of each item, as I was told. It was 800 cases of each item. It went from being what was like an $80,000 order to nearly a million dollar order. There was no way in the world we could produce that in time for their delivery dates to get on a ship to go. But I had told them that I could do it. The fact that I had screwed up and not got my numbers right, that I was an amateur, wasn't their problem, it was my problem. So what we did, we did, I went to 10 factories in Israel, which was make, at the time when we were producing our product, we now make it all here. We've moved all of our manufacturing to the US, which is kind of cool. I learned a, a really awesome, nifty skill that's important to do as you're a startup. It's called begging. And I, um, I, I went to 10 companies and begged them to produce quick, quickly for me. I then went to El Al, Israel's national carrier, and begged them to give me a 747 cargo plane. To which they actually replied no and told me I needed two 767s. Put that on my credit cards, my savings, pretty much everything that we had into this plane to fly out there. And got credibility by living up to our word. We lost money, but we, uh, we didn't make, we lost money on every item we sold them. But we, we, we made a commitment that we were going to be there on time, and we stuck, we, we stuck to it. All right, guys, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon.